All right. Good morning. Good morning. We're all here once again, ready to tackle the markets. It's almost 730 and we're going to watch the bell ring. Welcome everybody who's live and welcome everybody who comes and watch these in the replay. So up in the upper left-hand corner, we're going to watch the S&P 500. That's a 15-minute stock index in the futures market. In the upper right-hand corner is the one-minute Dow. In the bottom right-hand corner is the NASDAQ 100 Micro Mini. So it's 10 times smaller than the others that are here on the screen. And then in the bottom left-hand corner is the Mini Russell. Now, the Mini Russell has been performing for us this morning. That's a one-minute chart. So these are all one-minute charts right now, except for the one in the upper left-hand corner. That's a 15-minute chart because I like to trade options on that one if we think that there's an opportunity. So we can watch that. Today, if you were checking out the little marquee out front, the little thumbnail thingy, the little picture, I said we were going to change things up a little bit and look at the parabolic SAR. So <clears throat> I generally trade the ATR. And when we trade the ATR, if we get into a trend, which <laughs> sometimes in these indexes is a little more rare than it should be, but um, we like to get into a trend. And you can see down here on the Russell, this is a nice little trend that started to happen and started to occur. Of course, it just lost its mojo and died on us. It didn't continue. But nonetheless, we do get trends in these markets now and again. <clears throat> and the problem that we have is that we get stopped out, right? The market goes up and makes a little pullback and it stops us out and then it rallies, it stops us out, it rallies, it stops us out. Or we go up, we get in, we get stopped out, we take our small profit and then the market goes and takes off and goes to the moon without us. So how do you solve that problem? Well, you either have to wait and get back in when you get those little pullbacks or you don't trail your stop quite so close. If you don't trail your stop quite so close, though, then you end up with a situation like down here in, in the Russell on the left-hand side where you get in and you don't trail your stop and then it turns around, comes back, and you take and you lose a, a larger par portion of your a larger portion of your of your trade, right? Of your profits. So you give back way too much if you don't trail your stop close enough. So how do you handle this? How do you it's like, well, Lynn, I need to trail my stop very closely in one situation, but I need to not trail it closely in another situation. And both of those situations conflict with each other. So what do we do? Well, there's a strategy that's a little bit more advanced. And um, so I thought you guys are ready for a little bit more advanced strategy and we can start working on that. And that's called the cat's meow. It's what I call it. If you pull up my little book here, if you pull up my, my little cheat sheet, let's go to this one. We have in here the cat's meow. Oh, by the way, I'm using track and trade. So if you're curious about the software I'm using, this is what I'm using right here. It's called track and trade. I'm in the track and trade live futures version right now. We'll pull up the track and trade live uh, stocks version here in a little bit. This is Stocks and Commodities Annual Reader's Choice Award-winning platform seven times. If you want to get the software and play like I'm doing, <clears throat> come along with me. Go over to trackandtrade.com, download it. You can get a free download for two weeks, fully functional fully functional and you can try it out and see if you like it if you like it come back join us do what we're doing this is what we're doing and so uh come and join us <clears throat> with track and trade that said let's get back to what we were talking about we were talking about the cat's meow now i gotta get it to populate here where's cat's meow i think it's up a little higher where's cat's meow i'm sure it's in here it might be in the other book yeah, it's not in this one. I don't have cat's meow in here. I thought I had cat's meow in here. No, cat's meow is only in the manual. All right, where's the manual? What's the manual, Ann? What are you talking about, the manual? Well, the manual is over here. It's got more stuff in it. If we add to the stage, let's see, how do I do this? Boom, like that. This is the market manual. And I apologize for not having the cat's meow in my notes. The Cat's Meow is in the Stock Market Playbook of Strategies. This is actually my book. You can find it out on Amazon. It's the manual to this class. And if you come in here, you can see we got um, all kinds of really neat stuff in the manual. So I can flip, just flip through it. This is the uh, manual that you're going to get on Amazon. Just go out there and search Lan H. Turner. And then the Cat's Meow is in here somewhere. <laughs> Where's the cat's meow? There's too many things. This book's 220 pages long. Let's see if I can't find the cat's meow in here. I know it's in here somewhere. This is all the stuff you're going to get when you get this book. All right. Teach you everything you need to know about what we're doing in these classes. 
All right. It's too many pages. I'm going to have to go and find it and bring it back to you. The cat's meow. Let's just show it to you. All right. It's easier to tell the show than it is to tell. Let's come in here and we're going to come in and I'm going to go into number 14, Mini Russell. And in the Mini Russell, this is just the Russell that was down the bottom left hand corner. So this is all the different four different time frames for the Mini Russell. And so up in the upper right hand corner, you can see on the mini wrestle, we've got the range bar charts and I've already got the, uh, parabolic SAR turned on. I want to kind of focus on, let's focus on just the one minute chart for a minute here. And this is the one minute chart. There's the bell ringing. So the market's getting ready to take off and I want to turn on two indicators. So the first one is the ATR and that one we're familiar with. We use it all the time. But if we come in and we turn on the right click on their left, yeah, right click chart overlay. Parabolic SAR, parabolic SAR. And you can see I've got it set. Let's turn these down so not quite so bright. There we go. And we got two indicators on here that do very basically the same thing. You can see that they have the little dots, trailing dots. And you can see that this one here, this is a perfect example of what we're talking about. So what happens is the ATR, let's say you got in right here on this entry. And the market starts to rally and it goes up and then it stops you out right there. See that? But then on this one, the dots would have been trailing on the red dot instead of the green one. It wouldn't have it wouldn't have stopped you out. You'd have stayed in and gone all the way up to here. If you'd have got in on the green dots, you'd have had to get in re-enter right here and then take that next leg up. So it saves you one entry or you might not have got in. You'd say, well, I'm not going to get in on that. And then you missed that whole run, whereas you would have caught it if you were in the cat's meow. The cat's meow being that we have one stop if we're in with two contracts. We put one stop on each. So the way I do this is if we think this market's going to rally, we're going to come in here and let's say we're going to get in with two contracts. All right. So we're going to say I'm going to, is it going to go? We don't want to just get in and get stopped out. So we get in with two contracts. Now there's several ways we can do this. We can bring in our first stop and we can say that we're going to drop one right in here oh, we're going to get stopped out right here in the very beginning and then the other one we would turn in down here and then this one here what we would do is we would edit it that ah, we just got stopped out the thing's not going to go for us thought we might get another rally out of here instead we're going to get stopped out twice well there you go and that's how you get stopped out twice right in a row Let's see if we can't get it to go for us. Do you think it wants to go down now? I don't think it does. What's the news? I'm trying to give you an example of a charting strategy and it's not playing for us. Come on, come on. Let's do something here. Let's come over and look at the news. What's the news? This market's flushing on us. Why do we get that nice run, pull back, bounce off the blue light? I thought we might get a rally out of that, bouncing off that um, VWAP. Mm, coming down, breaking, flushing. Now you're feeling bad because you're not taking it in the other direction. So that was an entry to the short side off that green dot. If we thought that that was going to do that, be more than just a stop. But here it is coming down the other direction too. So the idea is that we're going to put two contract or two contracts in, let it go, and then we're going to have one stop on the green dots and one stop on the red dots. All right, that's the idea. But you got to get into a trend first. Okay, let's, let's see if we can get um, is this thing going to go. We'll take it short then. And then we're going to take one stop, and we're going to put it on the, take this one. And we'll drop it right in here close. I don't want to take a big risk. We'll just put it one par back. If it doesn't keep going, we'll just get out. But we can program that, edit, and we're going to tell that one is going to trail on the parabolic SAR. See that? So we're going to take one quantity, put it on the parabolic SAR, and then we're going to take another single quantity like this, and we'll put that one on the ATR. So now we got one trailing on the ATR, one on the PSAR. And the PSAR, as you can see in the beginning, it holds it way back here. So that's the parabolic SAR right there. And it holds it back quite a ways. That's why I've got this one that's sitting here closer. It's sitting here. If the market just turns around and comes back and stops us out again, it'll stop us out with another very small loss. But if the market continues to fall and we get into a nice trend, well, we got one that's trailing close on the green dot, right, on the ATR. And then the other one, see the red dot's way up here.
but the stop that's trailing on the red dot is actually way down here, but it's going to wait for it. It's called a contingency order. And it's, I've got it set there. It's contingent on the red dot catching up to it. If the red dot doesn't ever catch up to it, well, we'll just get stopped out at this point. It's not going to trail until the red dot catches up to it and then starts dragging it down. All right. So it'll move along with those dots. Let's see if we can't get something going here. Maybe we get a nice little downtrend. Let's look at the news while we're doing that. I'll slide this up to the top here. Let's get rid of some of these arrows. Delete all our arrows. All right. So we're short two contracts. We've made back enough money to get our to get our uh, our losses back if we wanted to just take our losses. But we're going to see if we can't catch a little bit of a trend here and let's show you that these dot systems come in. So we'd be up a couple hundred bucks right now. We're up 460 right now. But we took a $200 haircut there in the beginning when we thought the market might turn and rally on that that bounce and it didn't. So it's making an ABC pattern here. And go in this direction. That was what we call a decision point. At that point, you have to decide, do you think the market's going to turn and rally again? Or do you think it's going to turn and continue to fall? Now, we were in a nice uptrend in the beginning. We got the pullback. I thought it was going to bounce off that blue line and go again. But no, it decided to do that. So it came down here. It went down, went up, and now it's making the ABC to the downside. So that was what we call a decision point. You have to decide whether you think it's going to go up or down. And you got basically a 33% chance of being right. <laughs> I say 33% chance. It's like, man, isn't a 50-50 chance either going to go up or it's going to go down? No, it could go sideways. So if it just turned and decided to go sideways, that's not up or down. That's So that's why you have basically a 33% chance of the market moving in your favor. Now you're going to watch this and you're going to see why I'd probably generally just use the green dots. Now the green dots have barely got us into break even. We're up 320. So the whole idea is that our stop up here hasn't even started to move in our favor yet. So if this market doesn't just continue to flush out of here and it turns and starts to go back up, well, we're going to lose the 400 that we had. We're not going to take the 200 to cover our losses and we're going to end up with a scratch trade. So you have to take that into consideration too. Are you going to risk your 200 that you had in the pocket to cover the 200 that you already had as a loss? Or are you going to let it run and risk it in hopes that it go continues to fall and you make more money? One, two, three, four. What do we generally get? That's very common, right? We get four bars back. Then we get a little pullback, which in this case we got stopped out, took a tiny little profit. And then we'll look to see if the market won't continue to rally once again, fall once again. That would be our other entry for the green dot, right? So that's the problem with the green dot. Now, the problem with the red dot is if it just turns around and starts to go back up here, you're going to get stopped out with a loss when we were up $400. So the knife cuts both ways. Okay, we're going to try and get in once again. Not with that one, with this one. If it starts to fall, we'll try and put that order back on, the green dot order. I want it if it breaks that bar right there. Put that one in, take that one off. Okay, now it's going back, back, back. See that? We were up $400, and now we're only up $80 plus the 40 we took. Now it should start to fall once again. Give us that ABC pattern. Right? Now a lot of traders will take, again, <clears throat> advanced strategy. A lot of takers will take the short when it touches the green dots. We got out when it touched the green dots. A lot of guys will get in when it touches the green dots. Okay, but that's an advanced strategy because if you get in right there, it could just keep right on going up. So I like to wait till the market's turning and starting to fall. So the first green, first in this case, first red candle to make a new low off of that green candle pullback, that's my entry point. So I added my second one back in there. So now we're short once again. And I have my stop. My The red dots have finally caught up. And we got to put our other green one on there. So we got one, one on the red, one on the green. That's why it's called the cat's meow. 
I know I've got it in here somewhere. I gotta, I'll go look for it while you guys watch this. Didn't I put the cat's meow in here? That's frustrating for me. Oh, there it is. I went blue right past it. There's the cat's meow right there. So they see that? There's the cat's meow. So you got multiple contracts. Now this one's going long. We're doing it on the short side, right? We're we're following it short, seeing if the market won't fall. But then you can use all three dot systems. We got a blue light system that comes from the bulls and bears. We got a yellow one, which is in this case we're using. We just changed the colors to green. But um, that's your ATR, and then the red dot system, which is the parabolic SAR. So you get in with three contracts, and you trail with three different dot systems, which gives you three different locations for your trailing stops gives you more staying power or in this case more losing power cuts both ways so you hold your stop back further on the red one <clears throat> and so if the market doesn't trend move in your favor it's holding your stop back further so there's advantages and disadvantages now we got stopped out both sides Len, you were up $400. You had your $200 covered. Why didn't you take it? Well, because we were looking to see if this market wasn't going to fall a lot farther, right? So if you think the market's going to fall a lot farther, there's your options. <clears throat> if you don't, you can take your little scalp, <clears throat> take your $400 to cover your losses and be happy. But that's not what happened for us today. So... I try to teach a lesson. At least I taught you the lesson. Now you know why we use one versus the other, don't you? If the market really runs, it works really good. See that? How it really ran. It worked really good. See how the red dot kept you in, kept you all the way in, got out of the same space as the green dot up here. Right here, it skipped that little spot and kept you in. It flipped, but it didn't. It wouldn't have got you out because the trailing stop was back here. I don't think it would have got you out, but... That's the idea of the parabolic SAR. It holds your stops back farther than the green lights. All right. And the green lights are the ATR. So if you want to get into a situation where you want to have a little bit more staying power, you can put your stops on the parabolic SAR and on the ATR, and you can spread them apart, have them a little bit wider, and have a little bit more staying power and go for a longer term trend. But that's the difference between those two dot systems. One holds the stops back farther. One holds them a little closer. So if you feel like you're holding your stops a little bit too close, well, use the ATR. Use the parabolic SAR. Hold your stops back a little bit. What it does is it accelerates into the position a little bit faster and stronger than the ATR. The ATR actually loosens up as the market goes further in its favor. The ATR actually accelerates. So they actually cross. So the ATR will start um, tighter in this case, the way with our settings. And then and then as, it, as the market starts to move, it starts to pull back away and gets looser. Whereas the parabolic SAR starts looser, and as the market starts to pull away, it gets more accelerated. So it's kind of a across two different indicators. So these are two indicators that I would recommend that you play with a little bit. You can see that those of you who have been with me and come and hang out with me, you know that I use the ATR more than the parabolic SAR. But it doesn't mean you can't use the parabolic SAR. It's a good tool. I like it. It's just got different different methods. And in these indexes, it oftentimes seems that we don't get the big, long trends, or at least lately we haven't. In years past, we used to get big, long trends all the time. It was like falling off a log to trade these markets. But in the last couple of years, we've been really struggling to have anything break much, have any anything much. If we get a 10 bar, 10 bar rally nowadays, it's like really kind of rare. There's a nice little 10 bar rally right in there. How many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Look at that, 15 bar rally. Those are really rare nowadays. We used to get those all the time, but now really rare. Usually we get the four bar rally, don't we? We get a four bar rally. Oftentimes we'll get four bars, and that's where we get stopped out. And usually we kind of anticipate that we're going to get another four bar rally, but a lot of those have been failing too. We get the little four or five bar rally. We get the little pullback, and then there's a little four bar rally. But look how tiny the little the little bars are. And then we get our little three bar pullback, four bar rally, chop chop chop. Now it should start to fall once again. And I got in late, so we'll see if this market wants to even move far enough. There's two bars already, and we're barely in at the bottom of the two bars. We might not get anything out of it. 
So generally what we get is we get smooth, 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 choppy, choppy, smooth, smooth, choppy, choppy, smooth, smooth, choppy, choppy, smooth, smooth. Okay. So if the, the market's making smooth downs and choppy up, we're in downtrend. We should be making higher highs and higher lows, lower highs and lower lows. So in this case, here is a high. Here's a high, and it's lower than the previous high. Here's a high, and it's lower than the previous high. So that means we're in a downtrend. This is a low, and here's a low, and this low is lower than the previous low. Here's another low, and it's lower than the previous low. So that, again, means we're in a downtrend. We generally will get three of those in a row, right? Three drives. So here's drive one, here's drive two, and we're looking into drive three. Drive three is oftentimes not nearly as long as drive two. And drive two, in this case, was only four bars. So this is a wimpy little market, but we're going to see if we can't get that fourth bar. And it's not going to go. We're just going to get stopped out again. And we got in with three contracts that time, just thinking that we were going to, yeah, three strikes, you're out, Lane. You suck at this. There you go. This morning bell is not being happy for us. All right, let's see what happened. This is the news. UTC 6, so that's my time, 6.30 a.m. We had the initial jobless claims. The forecast was be to be 212,000 people looking for work, and they were right. 212,000 people were looking for work. The previous was 212,000 people looking for work, and there's still 212,000 people looking for work. The consensus was 200, 2015, so we got a little bit of a consensus that it was, that might be why we got a little bit of a rally in there because the consensus was 215, but it was only 212, but the forecast was 212. So that's a nothing burger right there. Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing comes in at 630. That was forecast one, Senate consensus 1.5, previous 3.2, actual 15.5. How do you forecast a one and get a 15? That's not something's wrong there. I think that's a typo. That's got to be a typo. It's got to be 1.5. Consensus was 1.5. Previous was 3.2. Actual Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index. It's got to probably be a 1.5. Fed speaks at 7 a.m. He's already spoke. We got another one. Another one. Existing home sales coming in at 8 o'clock. That one should, that's a, usually a pretty good one. It's not marked as a red, but it's usually pretty good. We got consensus forecast is 4.28. Consensus 4.2. Previous was 4.38. Oh, they're expecting it to be down. They're forecasting 4.28 versus a previous of 4.38. Existing home sales. Month over month, down to previous was 9.5. They're expecting to be down 2% month over month which would be why they're making this consensus up here. And then Fed Bowman speaks, <coughs> oh, Bostich speaks at 9, and Bo oh, Bostich speaks again at 3.45 p.m. He's speaking twice today. He's speaking at 9 o'clock. Well, we're not having a whole lot of luck here today. Let's go see what the other markets are doing. Look at that dead little market. Right out of the morning bell. We usually get something something in the morning bells, usually a little bit better than that. Look at that thing just died on us. That's why we got our heinies handed to us. The Dow, same thing, completely dead. Oh, look, the NASDAQ moved a little bit. The NASDAQ was the winner today. That one's the one we should have traded. So we turn on play, chart overlay. Let's turn on the parabolic SAR. Those dots are awful big, Mr. Parabolic SAR. Let's make those little bitty babies. There we go. So let's go down and look at this one. See if there's not some action that we can ca ca capture out of it. Okay, so see the different dot systems in here? They're pretty much right on top of each other, but one started back further. One starts a lot closer. The crossover on this thing was pretty weak <clears throat> on both of them. Well, that's the example we were just talking about, right? Once a market starts to move in your favor, the yellow dots kind of hold back, whereas the red dots, they accelerate into it, but they start further back. 
they start further back. See that? How the red dots are starting clear back here. But it's accelerating into the changeover, whereas the yellow dots, as the market starts to change over, starts to loosen up. So that's the difference between the two, the two uh, indicators. So if you use those as your trailing stops for entry, that's what you're going to have happen to you. All right, what are we going to do here? Bouncing off of that 50-period um, moving average right now. we got the 100 and the VWAP up there at the same price. That's the 100-period moving average and the VWAP right there. Magic blue line. we got higher highs and higher lows up that whole trend. So the green thing, the green trend is all higher lows. See that on the individual price bars? So this is a high right here. Okay, let's take a... We're going to take a three position short right here. This is one another situation we're looking at. This is a high. This is a high. This high is lower than this high. Here's a low. And so now we're going to expect this thing to come down and make a lower low, right? So we're going to look for a lower low. So this is going to be a downtrend or an ABC pattern. A, B, C, and look for it to come down and create a lower low. Is it going to do it? Nobody knows. Throw your darts at my dartboard over here in the carnival game. This is a carnival game, remember? This is just one big carnival game. And every chart is just another booth at the carnival game. Where are you going to come and throw your darts at them? You're going to throw, throw, throw baseballs into the milk jugs, into the milk ring. It would be rings, wouldn't it? Rings on the milk jugs? Or are you going to throw darts at the balloons? Or are you going to... Throw baseballs into the apple carts, into the apple basket. It's all a carnival game. We're just here playing the carnival game. The difference here is that we're going to try and have a little skill. Well, carnival, that's why I like the carnival game idea, not the casino. Carnival game, at least it takes some skill and it's possible to win. <laughs> you get good at it, you can win the, win the big stuffed animal. Win the big panda. Come on, big panda. We want a big panda today. There we go. Trying to move in our favor. It's trying. Now, this is where patience comes in. Patience, land. Patience. I ain't got no patience. I want it to go fast and hard right now. If it doesn't, I just get right back out. Wait for another opportunity. Come on. Come on. I want a big, beautiful trend just like this one. All higher highs and higher or lower highs and lower lows. Flat tops. Look, we're getting little. We're getting little spiky spikes on the top of those bars. That's not good. I don't like little spiky spikes. Look at that. Every single one of them. Spike, 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 spike. That's that's not good. That shows weakness in the trend. The strong trend has flat bottoms, flat bottoms, flat bottom, flat bottom. See that? See all these flat tops, flat tops, flat tops? That's strong trend. You get a market that has lots of little topping tails like that on this downtrend. That's a weak market. There, we're getting a little strength to the downside. Come on, buddy, rock and roll. Give me something here. I want to play the cat's meow. Okay, we should break the yellow dots this time. See how the yellow dots light leveled off here as the market was going up? It started to pull back against the market and let it see if it didn't want to go. And the idea is that it come down, make a little pullback, and then rally once again, and you don't get stopped out. That's why the yellow dots do that. But the red dots they start back farther see that but then they accelerate up into the trend so different strokes for different folks all right it looks like it wants to be an abc to the upside is it going to do one of these things up down up and then go this way who knows nobody knows Another decision point. We're making a green bar. Is it just going to be a little small green bar, spike everybody out, and turn and fall again? Or is it going to be an actual turnaround point where it's coming up, turning, and then it's going to go up? Or is it just going to go sideways now? Well, because we're short, it'll probably turn and go up. And that's a clearing bar. 
And the first flat bottom bar after that clearing bar is usually the direction of the trend. The clearing bar is a bar that has a big topping tail and a big bottoming tail that encompasses the previous bars high and low. And that's a clearing bar. So what happens? It clears out, stops out all the stops above, stops out all the stops below, and then everybody has to get in fresh once again. So if everybody gets in fresh once again, it's like, okay, which direction are more people going to push this market? And it looks like they're going to go up. So, of course, we're going to get in long to try and reverse this thing and watch it come up and hit those numbers and flush once again because that's what it does. <clears throat> that's what it does. We're getting a flat bottom here, so maybe that's an indication that the market's going to stay long. But if it doesn't go either way, you can't make money one way or the other. Come on, you stupid thing. We'll try this one more time. Yep. It's just beating us up today. It doesn't want to trend again. Calls everybody in, says, hey, look how well I'm trending. And then says, no, nope, changed my mind. Don't want to trend well. Don't want to do that anymore. And we're just in the micro mini, so. Come on. We just want to catch a trend. We can't get anything out of this market today. We're going to go over and look at options again in the stock market. Eight o'clock is coming up here in just a minute. Maybe we'll get a little movement at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, existing home sales comes out. If it were me, Lan, I would have been so rich. I'd have just caught that big red down and that big green back up, and then I'd have been done. I'd have quit. Yeah, me too. I'd have done that too. Me too. Except for I was looking at the other market. Oh. Is it waiting? Is it just waiting? Is that what it's doing? It's waiting for existing home sales to come out? Not going to play your game. If you're just going to bounce back and forth, we're just going to get out again. Wait. Let's see what happens when this existing home sales comes out. 59. Play your whipsaw game. Okay, guys, come on. Let's see it happen. There it is. There's a click down four, 4.9. <clears throat> There's our numbers. Existing home sales. What happened? You dumb thing. Don't switch on me like that. Okay. Forecast was 4.28. Actual is 4.19. Previous was 4.38. 4.19. Forecast was 4.28. Take one contract. Take a short position on the bad news. <clears throat> This market's not even pay attention to that news. It doesn't even care. It's like, we're going to just do what we were doing, which is nothing. We're just going to sit here. Come on, you got bad news. 2.2, 4.3. .2, .2. No 
Nobody wants to play. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Where have all the traders gone? Look at all the volume just dying. <laughs> That's our trend. Worthless. We had a good one, didn't we? It would look like that was going to be the one to trade. We're just getting our heinies kicked, even on the news event. Nothing, 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 nothing. What's wrong with these markets? Got bad news, fall. Oh, I want to go up on bad news. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's great. Great. Nice. You're going to go up on bad news. Yeah, land, because we know you got a short position on. And you're doing it in front of a bunch of people. <laughs> That's embarrassed land. All right. Some days, that's how the cookie crumbles. Stuck my head in the cold water. Thought I was going to grab myself an apple out of the basket. Out of the bucket of cold water, and instead I got a face full of cold water. Come on. There you go. It's all a carnival game. Mostly luck, but there is a little skill involved. Come on. You got bad news. You shouldn't go up. Oh, come on, come on, push down there. More bad news, more bad news. Uh, but it's going to be like, you know what? It's not bad enough news. It's not bad enough news. It's just not doing anything. Wobble, 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 wobble. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. I'm not going to play this stupid back and forth game. If it comes back and stops us out, I'm just going to get out. What a worthless market. Can't go anywhere. Ah. This is called major frustration. Oh, oh, look at Russell. Look at Russell. Russell's trying to drop. Oh, look at the Dow. Dow's taken off to a fall. Nice, nice fall. Oh, yeah. I see how you are. I see how you are, you stupid market. That's why you got four screens laying so you can look at four at once, not get myopically fixated on one market. I know, I know. That's why I have four screens. Look at that stupid NASDAQ. What the heck is going on with that thing? That's very bullish, actually, believe it or not. That's bullish because that's a nice, smooth, smooth, smooth. Remember, smooth, 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 chop, 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 chop. When it starts to go, it should be smooth, smooth, smooth again. When's it going to go? Well, probably when just because we got out. It's going to go on a break of that yellow dot, and then it should go. You going to try it one more time, Lan? Heck, piece of shit market. It ain't going nowhere. It's just sideways. Dow's sideways. Everything's sideways. That's not what I wanted to do. 
plebeian mistake. <laughs> Can't do that. Turn lemons into lemonade. Let her rip. You screwed up. Let her rip. Let her rip. Come on, buddy. Okay. That helped us out a little bit. Land made a mistake. Got in with 10 contracts on the full-size contract <laughs> instead of on the micro mini. What'd you do wrong on there? What was your mistake? Well, I'm trading the micro mini down here. And 10 contracts is equal to one contract in the full size. So I put in 10 thinking, well, we're going to get a break out of this thing and it's going to rally. So I wanted to be in with one contract, which again, in the micro mini would be 10, but I accidentally had this one selected and I hit 10 and that's 10 on the full size. So that was a nice trade, but I didn't trust it. So I took it back off. Oh, you rotten little dog. You rotten little market. Come on. All right. We'll just get stopped out again. Come on, you rotten thing. Push up there. Boy, nobody's trading today. What is today? You'd think it was a... Friday on Christmas Eve. Who was it that said that to me the other day? I love that statement saying. Good morning, Gary Thomas. How you doing? Not such a good morning for me. You're getting my hiney handed to me. We got Bruce in the house. There you go, Bruce. How you doing, Bruce? Kirk Schwartz saying hello. Bruce, where to put my stops? That is a continual dilemma for me. Yeah, that's what those yellow and red dots are supposed to be, but I don't like them on the very entry. As soon as I get in, I don't like to put them clear back there because that's the, too big of an exit. If it doesn't just immediately go in my favor, I just get out. It's easier to recover 10 little small losses than it is one grand, grand, two great, great, great big giant losses. Hello, Michael Bruce. Good morning. How's things going? I love your picture. There's Selena. How you doing, Selena? It's good to see you today. Glad you made it. Anybody else? We got lots of people watching. Anybody else wants to throw your little marquee up there? I'll say hi and make you famous. Look at these stupid things. They're just, just doing nothing. All right. This is this market's not worth trading today. We're just gonna we're gonna have to come back when the when's the when's the Fed gonna speak? Fed Williams speaks. Existing home sales, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Uh, you're not, he's not going to change anything. He's just going to get up there and pontificate. I don't know why the market would wait for him to come and pontificate. It's trying to go one more time, trying to break. So we go in with five and see if we can't catch this run here. Go into the one. We'll try and catch this run here. Come on, guys. Let's try one more time. We're going to go one more time. Oh, look down here. Russell's trying to break too. Come on. One more run. One more time. Let's give it one more shot. We're going to come in here. We're only in with a single. We're in with five on this one, which is half a contract. I just don't trust anything. This market's not got any trust in it whatsoever. No trust. No belief that we're going to get anything out of it. It is at the top of the hour. It's 10 after 8. A lot of guys will flip on their autopilots at 8 o'clock. Maybe we can get something to push here. We got to get guys to hit the market buy buy market button. That's what pushes markets higher. Buy market buttons. Come on, hit the buy market button. It's going to try and break above that previous high right here. Trying to break above this previous high right here. That one broke above the previous high. We got another previous high right there. It's trying to get across. We got to come up to that one. Even the s and is trying to rally. How about that? Come on, Dow Jones. Come on, NASDAQ. All right, we're going to put that little baby right there on the yellow dot. We're going to say 
That's ATR, isn't it? Okay. That's dying. It's dying. It's dying. Of course it is. Of course it's dying. Of course it is. Of course it's going to die. Why wouldn't it go harder? Because land's in the market. Land's trading. Come on, you rotten dog. It's going to die on us. Nobody's hitting the buy market button. Well, we're going from red to green on the MACD. The door is open. Come on, pop it up there. Come on, you can do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. We know you want to. We know you want to. We know you want to. Look at the volume. It's almost dead. There ain't nobody trading this market today. Friday evening on Christmas Eve. We're going to go over, as soon as we get stopped out here, we're going to go over and look at the stock market and see if there's anything that's moving. Probably not. Look at the S&P 500. It's dead as a doornail. Dead as a doornail. You guys ever heard that saying? dead as a doornail okay well we tried we tried didn't we we tried we gave you an opportunity today today was your opportunity and it didn't come through all right what have we got going over here nothing oh my gosh of course of course nothing that's because nothing was going on over there nothing but tesla falling UAL. Oh, it's got an extension. Oh, I wanted to talk about that. We got out yesterday, took our little bit of, I think we made like $200 on UAL, right? Of course, I lost it on Delta. There's American Airlines. Where's Delta? There's Delta. It's trying to go. These were good markets yesterday. They died as soon as we, I mean, we, we turned off the computer, right? And then the markets died all day, but they stayed up there a little bit. And then in the end of the day, in power hour, they took off again. And now they're up again today. So what we should do is we should, because we're trading, right? Because we're trading options in the stock market and we're trading like two to five day options, right? <clears throat> we're not trading the zero DTE options. <clears throat> we could have held some of those overnight and we'd be up again today. So we should try that, right? We don't need to get out with all of them if we got a strong market or a strong a strong stock that's popping and nothing else is popping. Maybe it'll go the second day. What are we on the S and P? We're up four grand on the S and P. Let's go take a look at it before we look at these others. It's still falling. We got that um, hundred period moving average sitting down there, and then a two hundred down here. So we're going to hang on to this one. We're up $3,800 on our S&P short position. So that's how you make money when the markets fall. You buy put options, right? So the other one, oh, this is just our mags. And we got a put option on the mags too. And it was down $100 yesterday. Right now it's down 60 Put option. We got one day left. It expires tomorrow. We got into it a little bit early. Should have waited till they got the red arrow. Oh, well. We got a little early on this one, too, but it's paying off. We got a little bit more time on this one, 92 days. Again, we should have waited till they got the red arrow, but I was a little anxious. Got a little anxious, a little nervous. All right, there's American Airlines. There's what opened this morning, fail. Broke above the blue lights right there. It's made a little pullback. Is it going to do this little thing? Is it going to go down and then up again? Are we going to have a nice day on, on American Airlines? What about um, 
United Airlines. Oh, that looks good, doesn't it? Came down, touched that. Uh, what is that green one? That's a 28 period moving average. It's starting to try to rally once again. Let's come down here and. Oh, we could do an eight day, but if we let's go just look at the one day. One day will give us expiration tomorrow. So at the money, those are 68 bucks, and there's lots of people playing. They're $3 spread. Oh, we came in and we were thinking too long. Man. Let's wait a second. Maybe it'll pull back. Bank of America. That one was another one we were playing with yesterday. There's Delta. Delta kind of kicked our hiney yesterday because I stayed in it too long. There's a nice little break. Trying to go up, test that previous high. Oh, too many charts. Can't see them all at once. Oh, let's, let's get rid of some of these. Let's actually, these are airlines. Let's get rid of mags. We're not going to change that. We're not going to change the S&P. There's Love, Delta, Bank of America. Are we going to play that one? No. Let's get rid of that one today, too. Let's just look at the, in, the airplane. Let's just look at airplanes. Oh, Lan, you missed the United Airlines opportunity. Oh, I didn't miss it. I could still get in. I just thought maybe it'd give us just a tiny pullback before we had to get in. If it breaks those blue lights, right? Hindsight, you'd look back and say, why didn't you get in when it broke the blue lights? But that's the only thing playing, playing kind today. Same ones that were yesterday. These little airlines. What's these over here? AMD. I'm trying to. Oh, those are just a little bit of a sympathy rebound from yesterday's fall. Kimmy. Kimmy is trying to move. Kinder Morgan, $18. Look at that. KMI. KMI. Meta's trying to move a little bit. That's a $500 stock. I want to go see Kimmy. KMI. Oh, see, there's our pullback. KMI. Trying to rally. Of course, it should just be a, it's trying to just to bounce off that 100 period moving average. <sighs> Let's go down to a two minute chart and see what it's doing. Kimmy, Kimmy, Kimmy. We should be able to have options on it. It is one of the S&P 500. Come on. Any options? Oh, $13.50 for an option on Kimmy for one day. How much is one that's 29 days? $31. I don't know if we want to put that on or not. The S&P's down. There's not very many stocks going to be going up in the S&P if the overall stock index is down. We're making money on the index falling, and these are all counter trends trades. These are all going to be really wimpy trades going to the long side. If the S&P, all the S&P, if the S&P was going up, we'd get a lot more bubbles going up, right? What about bubbles going down, Lan? Okay. We can go look at bubbles going down. Tesla. LVS, Las Vegas Sands. Oh, that thing fell out of bed. Intel still falling. Apple, 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 Apple. I'm so disappointed in Apple. So disappointed in Tesla, too. Why is there market? Is everybody traveling? Is it you guys all buying airline tickets? Is that what's going on here? There ain't nothing happening. Let's go look at something else. Let's go look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ's got so much crossover with the S&P. It's like, why bother? Oh, CSX. Uh, that's one little rebound. Sympathy rebound. That's a sympathy rebound. AMD, NVIDIA. Which one do we want to look at? None of these look exciting. 
Nothing, nothing. There's nothing. Meta. Let's go look at Meta. It's big. Big stock. Mm, trying to bounce. Trying to bounce off that 50 period moving average. Trying to bounce off those blue lights. MACD's pointing down though. Let's go look at a two minute chart and see if it wants to move at all. So big, it's probably not going to move much. Yeah, it's trying to break. <clears throat> Let's go see what some options would be on Meta. One day option on Meta. Five hundred and ninety five bucks. Six hundred dollars spreads ten dollars. It costs you ten bucks to put one of these babies on. About the only thing moving, isn't it? Let's see if we can't get something out of Meta. As it tries to break across this high. That's what we're looking for. Continuation as it breaks across that high right there. Now, oftentimes what happens is it'll come up and then flush. And then catch and go. So we'll see. United. Good thing we didn't take that position, huh? Where are we at on the Fibonacci scale? Look at that. Came right down. Touched that 61.8. Ignored the 50 period moving average. Bounced off 61.8. <clears throat> Well, that's just because that's where you put your Fibonacci ruler land. What if I put my Fibonacci ruler somewhere else? Well, I could be more accurate and put it right back here with this beginning of the trend. Still puts it right at 61.8. It's not going to change that 50 period moving average by changing the where you start your Fibonacci ruler. Never did come to 50. Stopped at 61.8. Let's see if it comes down break 61.8. Then we'll see if it'll bounce off the 50. That's the 100. That's the 200. Do we think it's going to go back up? Yeah, we do. We're bullish on this market. Why? Because it had this big thing. This is just a profit-taking pullout back. And yesterday was a good day. So this is a continuation market. Meta. Told you it's not going to go hit that area of resistance. It's going to pull back. We're down 60 bucks on Meta. You rotten little dog. We are green on the MACD, though. Come on. Pop up there, you little buddy, buddy boy. Come on, Zuckerberg. Make some money. American United Airlines. Love. I don't like that big bar like that. Let's come back to 50%. What if we brought that there? Well, and it came back to 61.8%. It's right there in the Fibonacci sweet spot right now. It's pretty weak, though. Look at these bars. If we turned off Ike and Ashy, this would be an ugly chart. Look how ugly that chart is. Volume on this thing is nothing. Nothing. One day, $26 for an option on it, though. It's only 26 bucks for a single option. You could trade it with hardly any risk at all. There goes Meta. Hey, we're back. To, we're, we're a break even on Meta. Come on, Zuckerberg. We got four flat bottom green bars. What happens after four flat bottom green bars, everybody? We generally get a pullback. Hey, we're up $7.50 on Meta. So we've made our $30 in spread back. And we're actually up $7.50. Come on, buddy. Rock and roll for us. Take off. Go to the moon. It's the only stock anybody's looking at. Come on. Meta, 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 Meta. It's up here. It's number one. I'm number one. I'm number one. Let's come down here to DJI. Oh, 
Unihi. $498 stock. All the big expensive stocks. Everything else is down. What's this one? Apple, of course. Intel, Microsoft. Who's losing the most? Salesforce. You're really sucking wind, Salesforce, but nobody's trading it. Look how small the volume is. Amazon's losing money. Walmart's losing money. Let's go look at Walmart. We like to trade Walmart. Oh, it looks down. That's a good down pattern. It's trying to make lower lows. Oh, look at it rebound right now, though. MACD is green. That means buy, buy, buy. Could be a call to arms. You want to buy one of MACD? One of the uh, center. $9 for a one-day option on, <laughs> on the rebound of Walmart. Do you think that's going to go? Or do you think it's just going to be an ABC pattern down? ABC down, just like that. Dun, dun, dun. Hit that blue light, turn and fall once again. Or do you think that's going to be the actual rebound? It's going to turn around and start to go up now. It's a decision point right there, right there at those blue lights. See, it's crossing those blue lights. That's a decision point. Put one of each on land. It's only $9. Yeah, well, we're not going to do just one. Can't do just one. It's like a Lay's potato chip. Got to have more than one. Hey, look at our meta over there. It's up 142 bucks. You want to go look at it? Yeah, baby. Look at that baby rock and roll. Where did I draw my arrows before we're going to turn and fall? One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to take your 165 bucks. This is where it peters out and turns around and comes back down. How many you got? We only got two of them. Oh, we got three of them. Liquidate the option. One, two. Let's take one off. Take a little profit. Got to take a little profit today. Man, alive. We've had such a rough day. We haven't had any profits. There, we took a little profit off. Wait, see, now we're all two contracts paid 80 bucks. We took one off, closed. How much did we chart? Well, we made 20 bucks because <laughs> of the spread. Oh, well, hey, it's green. Don't laugh. We're still up 60 bucks on this. These are just trades. They're not investments. Not investing in meta. If we were investing in meta, we'd come in here and we'd say, what would you do if you want to keep this for a longer term period, Land? Well, we'd have to go to a longer term chart, wouldn't we? We'd have to say, do we think that meta is going to keep going up? This is the daily chart of meta. No, it doesn't look like it. Look at all these drives. Where's our for last red one right there? Drive one, drive two, drive three. We're at the top of a drive three. Trying to make a drive four, but I think it's going to come down. That's a little buy signal right there. Trying to break and do a what? Drive one, two, three. Trying to make a fourth drive, and it failed. Fourth drive failed. Now we're hitting the X4, X1, X2. X3, X4. So that's trying to come down off that third, fourth drive. Tried to make a fourth drive, couldn't do it. You want to be long meta right here? No, I don't. Not really. Just on this little rebound here. It doesn't mean meta can't turn and go up again. It's a pretty strong stock and it's very heavily involved in AI. But what I really want to see, I'd like to see it pull back a little bit farther just so we can get a buy low, sell high strategy. I'd like to see these bars go red. That's what I want to see. I want to see a complete reset like this. See that? If we can get some red bars in here. Then we could call this a new reset and we could go for another three drive pattern. It's trying to go. Still got two contracts long. Come on, Meta. Uh, we're going to. Do little lands, little pullback here. Come on, rock and roll.
Don't fall in love with it. It's just a trade. It's just a trade. Don't fall in love with it. We're coming in. But I love you, Meta. I love you. <laughs> Michael Bruce says that the airlines had a good good earnings report. When did they have their earnings? Do you know? Had nothing to do with flying. Those people must be flying if they got good earnings, so right. Come on, Meta. It's gone into the silent sideways channel. We could just hang on to this one. Just leave it on there for the rest of the day and see what it does tomorrow. Are you guys good with that? The max we can lose is how much we pay for it. We paid $1,260. So we can lose $1,260. How much are we going to lose today? Half of that. Well, we won't lose half of it. But we got a chance of $600 loss. We're, we're, it's got to move. Time decay is killing this one. There's a lot of time decay on this one. It's only got one day left. Usually I like to do when I trade like this with, you know, five, six days. But there ain't a five or six day option. Look, the next one out there is 29 days. We could do these. You know what? Meta might have. Here's an eight day. It's a weekly option. And it's got a little bit of volume. But look at the spread. It's 35 bucks. That's why we don't do that one. Do a 15 day spread, 45 bucks. That's why we don't do that one. 22 days spread, 40 bucks. That's why we don't do that one. 29 days spread. Oh, that's $35 too. Oh, that sucks. What was the spread that we pay on the one day? Oh, well, it's $20. $15. We got two contracts. We're up $70. If we got out, we'd pay $40 to $50, $40, $40 in spread. Oh, look, it's fallen. Well, that's weird. Oh, the spread's going. What? We're up 90. Oh, wait. We're up $100 and the market's falling. 110, 120. On that little pullback, the market went up. That's weird. Now it's 110. Take your money, land. Just take your $100 and run away. Uh, it's going to do that little, is it going to do that little thing right here? Is this where we're going to get a little flush? Nobody wants to play. Look at volume. It's dead. Dead volume. Brrr. Volume just fell off. Nobody wants to come and buy meta. Where have all the traders gone? Well, we can sit and watch paint dry. That's uh, fallen. This is where we're getting our pullback. Get out, Lynn! Get out! Get out. Remember Delta yesterday? Get out. Ooh, what's it going to do? What do you guys want to do? You want to get out or you want to stay in? Come on. Write in the comments. Stay in or get out. Nobody has an opinion. <laughs> Nobody wants to be wrong. I don't want to be wrong. 
man, you'd think this was a put. Every time it comes down, the market goes up. When it goes down, up, it goes down. These are calls, I promise. Market started to rally and the price went down. Kirk says, stay in. Michael says, stay in. Oh, look, you guys said stay in and the market fail. <laughs> stay in, stay in. Get out, get out. All right, we're going to stay in this one for a little while. Let's go over and see if there's, oh, United Healthcare. We were going to go look at that one. How come I can't get it to change? There we go. UNH. Ooh, baby's rocking and rolling. Look at that, three days in a row. We didn't trade that one yesterday because it's just such a big, giant market. And for that thing to move like 2% takes a lot. Look at that. Wow. $498. What do you think that thing's going to do? Flush like a toilet? Puts. Buy a put. That's a $60. Well, it is what it is. Why are you thinking that's going to fall, Lan? Well, drive one, drive two, drive three. See, we got our first drive. We got our little counter trend or a little hesitation in here. Wasn't a big one because we had strong market. Then we had our second drive. Then we had our little counter trend in there. Then we have our third drive. So we're at the top of the third drive. And we're at the top of the first drive. So this is drive one all the way up on the bigger, longer-term trend. So on the macro size, it's three drives up. You guys saw that as soon as I turned it on, right? You're like, oh, three drive pattern. The very first thing I saw, I know that's what you guys saw. You've been trained well, well trained, well trained. Does that mean it's going to fall? No. It's a carnival game. You just kind of use your very best skills and see if that thing's not going to do what you think it's going to do. That's what we want it to do. We want it to come back to the Fibonacci sweet spot, right? I only went in with one, but one was 472 bucks. Lan, aren't you supposed to be doing risk and money management strategies, buying into these things based on the amount of money you got available to you in your account? Aren't you supposed to be risking 5% of each of your, yeah, you can do that. See, it's a hundred dollars. So 5% of a hundred dollars, we could be putting on like 10 of these things if we wanted to, if that's what we were doing, but we're being a little bit more cautious, a little bit more careful. This market's a little crunchy. We could play Doc Brown and just put the entire your entire account on any trade that you're going to be in. He's his theory. If you're going to pull the trigger and be in a trade, and you think it's good enough to get into, then why wouldn't you just get in with everything you got? Just put the entire account on there. Otherwise, why are you getting in? If you, if you don't think you could put your entire account on that trade, why would you get in at all? Why would you put a little bit on? If it's not a good enough trade to put your entire account on, why would you even get in? Okay. That's one school of thought. It is one school of thought. Because when you're right, you're right. Man, you are right. You are right big. Should we play the Doc Brown side? <laughs> How many could we put on if we wanted to take as many shorts as we could afford? How many are they going to let us put on? Let's see. What would we do? Let's say we're going to come in here. And we're going to buy everything we can afford. We're going to do these right here. Buy out of the money, or in the money. This is in the money. Let's buy an out of the money. This, let's buy one right here. Let's buy this one at the money. This is a little at the money here. How many could we afford? I don't know if they'd let us have that many, or even if there's that many that we could buy. Look at the volume on it. It just sucks. We couldn't even get that many. Seven thousand eight. There's There's $10,000 worth right there, 33 of them. That would be that would be one percent. That ten. I got a hundred thousand dollars. 
So that'd be 10%, $10,000. But I don't think I could even get it to give me 32 of them because volume is 107. Oh, well, volume on the one we're looking at. Well, open interest is zero. Nobody's keeping it overnight, but volume is 423. Then we'd probably get it. But that's only 32. That's 10%. That's not 100%. I don't think they'd give us 100%. <laughs> There's not enough volume out there to take 100%. 33 contracts, so four, $498 a share. And that's, man, that's a lot. Because remember, each option represents 100 shares. And actually, because we're doing one day till expiration, this is a delta of 44. It's only 44 shares. So... That would be 44 shares point times. Forty four times thirty two. That would be one thousand four hundred shares that we'd be controlling of United Health if we did that. Mm -hmm. We'd be putting ten thousand dollars in it and we'd be controlling one thousand four hundred and eight shares. If we're gonna do that with cash and not options, one thousand four hundred and eight shares times 498 $498. That would be $700,000 position if we were using shares. But since we're using options, it would be $10,000. That's your leverage. That's your leverage. We got two. No, we've only got one. We got one, so we're only holding 44 shares. We're 44 shares short. 44 shares short, that would be still $50,000 in shares. But it doesn't look like it wants to fall. Come on. You're like, I, I, I'm not going to fall. I bought all those United Healthcare shares because I wanted them. I'm not going to give them back now. I bought them because I wanted them. Why did you want those? Buying them at the top, buddy. You're buying them at the top of a three drive peak out. Maybe it's going to go one more. Maybe they made some money. Maybe they got some sick people. Lots of sick people. Well, I ain't going to put this on. Let's just let this one hang out for a little while. It's like watching paint dry. Don't want to sit and watch paint dry. What's over here? Nothing. Look at this market. Holy cow. Well, the S&P. Look at that. The S&P rallied. The S&P went up. What the, what the heck? Nothing else did. I mean, I guess they did. I guess United Healthcare pulled the S&P up. Ugh. United Healthcare. Let's dump that one out. Let's wait. What happened to that one? This is our zero line. Dow Inc. is right at the zero line. So Amazon's moved up a little bit. Visa's nothing dead. Apple, nothing dead. IBM, nothing burger. Intel, that's one that's dropped a little. Microsoft's dropped. CRM's dropped. JP Morgan is trying to rally. We traded JP Morgan, didn't we? Oh, look, it's trying to go back up again. JPM. Well, Meta's still trying to push higher. Meta's trying to push for higher for us. Came down and touched our look at that. That's our that's our Fibonacci bow tie. It's ugly, ugly as it gets, but there it is. One, two, look at that ugly little bow tie. Came down, tie just, that's just what we talk about, right? Weak, weak bow tie. Look at that little thing. Tied off right there. Now it's trying to make another one. Yeah, so here's your bow tie right here. So there's your start. Come on, Meta. Let's see if you can make another bow tie better than this one. Look how putrid that was. Little tiny square right there. That square is supposed to be the same size as that one if it's in a normal market. This ain't no more normal market. This ain't no normal market. 
United Healthcare is trying to rally. There goes Meta. Keep her going, Meta. Come on, Zuckerberg. Pedal. Pedal faster. <laughs> Probably the best thing to do is to, you know, I'm not happy with this market. Not happy with what's happening over here. Impossible to trade. So hard to trade when it does that. Dow, Russell, 2000. Let's look at some small caps. Me, 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 me. It's all about me. Let's go see what me's doing. Did you guys see me? Me. It's all about me. Look at Zuckerberg's dying on the vine right there. He tried to, he can't even make a little, he can't. Come on, you Zuckerberg. This is a little bow tie right here. Down, up, look how tiny this little bow tie is. It's supposed to go up here and then tie that bow tie off right there. Tiny little bow tie. Just like this one. Tiny little bow tie. Tiny little bow tie. It can't even do that. It's going to go up there, sit, hit that, and it's going to fail, and it's going to come down, and it's going to break these blue lights, and it's going to say, there's drive one for you, land. That's drive one. So we got drive one, drive two, and it's failing on drive three. Come on, little Zuckerberg. Give us a little peek above. Come on, go up there. Just go up above this one, just a little bit up in there. Come on, you can do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. You know you want to do it. And then we'll take you off. When are you going to take it off, Land? Liquidate. Let's come in here and say if it gives us, we're at 120 right now. Let's say if it gets up to one, that would be quite a move. I don't know if it would go all the way up to, let's say 150. If we hit $150, we'll take it off. We might take it off earlier, but that's what we'll put an order on there. Because if we're watching something else and it gets up there and come on, make that little third drive high, gets up to 150 bucks, we'll take it off. We're at 125 right now. Well, there's 130 Only $20 more, and we'll pop that baby off. Oh, it gave it to us. There we go. We got her. $180. $200 on Meta. We just made $200 on Meta. We got her, baby. We got her. We rock and roll. Let's go look at this one. Um, um, is it going to break that blue light and start to go once again? That would be the drive two. This is drive one. This is drive two. We were expecting a little bit more of a pullback. Where we made $200 in meta, we're down $95 on Uhine. Or I mean, on United, not Uhine. Well, 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 it's just died right there. Doesn't want to go up or down. So me, me, me. Oh, we we're going to go look at me, me, me. We got distracted. Me, open symbol. 23 and me. 23 and me. What is that? Oh, oh, they got quite a run there. So 50 cent stock. There's not going to be any options on it. Oh, there are. Holy smokeroonies. 100 days. You could buy a 100-day option on this thing for $10. That's like a lotto ticket. And did you see that thing on the daily chart? Woo-hoo. Drive one, drive two. Drive one, drive two. It actually made a drive three. It's just so tiny. It broke that down there, right there. That becomes a Wyckoff spring right there. That baby's going to go to the moon. 
23 and me. Look at that thing. Somebody got excited about that stock. Let's go back down to the two minute and look at this thing. It's trying to pull back right now. What do you guys want to do? That might be a fun one just to be like, hey, it's only $10. And we could buy one person bought some. Look, six people bought this one today. $55. If we bought that. And that thing went to the moon. Where in the heck is that at? Way the heck up there. Holy smoker roonies. What about this one? There it is, at the money. Of course, we're at a down arrow. We should be a little bit more strategic about buying that if we're going to buy it. It's a $10 spread, and it's a $10. It's a $10 spread, and it's a $10, $10 option. What if what if twenty three and me went to went to two dollars? What if it just went right back up here to one dollar? You'd double your money. You'd go from five you'd go from your wait, that's a put. We need calls. You'd go from, wait a second, what the heck's going on here? They're one dollar. Oh, that's the one that's not the one we want. Let's go out two hundred and seventy five days. It's $22. The spread's $5. If you bought that thing and 23andMe went back to, where's it been? Let's see where it's been. This is kind of fun to think about, isn't it? 23andMe has been as high as $5. It's $6. It's been $6. And this thing's exploding today. The bottom of a little three drive pattern. <laughs> what do you want to do? You want to buy a lotto ticket? How much are you going to risk on your lotto ticket? Let's see. Let's try that again. This could be a really dumb move or it could be a really good move. What what is that? Two hundred and seventy five days, almost a year. How where's twenty three and me going to be in a year? How many of these you want to buy? Oh, this is funny. Let's put in five hundred dollars worth. You're willing to risk five hundred bucks to see if this thing's going to go to the moon? What would that be? Do the math. Fifty cents is what you're paying for it. And right now it's trading at a delta of 74, but in a year it'll be a delta of one. So let's say that in a year we keep this thing till expiration. We're going to just risk $500 on this baby. And let's say that it goes back up to $5. <laughs> let's go as it goes to $5.50. So they make $5 on each one. And you have how many shares? 22 of them. 22. So 22 times 100, right? Of course, is 2,200. So you have 2,200 shares. Let's say you make $5 a piece times $5. You'd make $11,000 on your $500 move in one year if that thing went back to $5 a share. Well, if it only goes to a dollar a share of land, well, then you'd make $1,000. You'd double your money. 100% markup. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. But what's the chances of that doing it? Pretty low. Pretty low. There's a reason why it's a $5 stock that's gone to 50 cents. Probably go to zero. So if you do it, you probably lose all your money. Let's do it. Okay, there you go. You got $500 of 23andMe. Lotto ticket. Lane just bought a lotto ticket. There's VTNR. There's another rally. These are the ones that Ross plays. Ross trades these. These are pump and dumps. VTNR. VTNR. Penny stocks. Penny, penny stocks. Anything below $5 is considered a penny stock. They stay below $5, they get kicked off the NASDAQ. Did you know that? If they're on the NASDAQ and they fall below $5, they can't get back above $5, they kick them off. 
So sometimes they play some games. They play some crazy games to try and stay on the NASDAQ exchange. So they do some stuff to get it back above $5. So it's 50 cents. And they're trying to get it back above $5. They want to stay on the exchange. They don't want to go off to the pink sheets. Well, that's a nice little rally. Vertex. Vertex Energy. It's on a pullback right now. Do you think it's going to go again? Do you think it's going to go again? 29-day option on this thing. The calls, 42 bucks. $35 on the spread. 342 outstanding. 16 bought today. That's a $10 spread with 105 and 749 $15. That's... Oh, that's a one day. We don't want one day. Wait, what did I do? Open that up. Oh, that's 29 days. How many of them you want? 15, 30? Remember, you got to pay $15 in spread. 75, put $100 in there. Land's getting crazy. It's time he goes and eats some breakfast. Where'd that order come in at? Oh, it's up there. It's out of the money. All right. So we bought um, $140 worth of those. We bought seven of them. Well, that was random. <laughs> All right. We got 30 days for that baby to rock and roll for us. Do something. What did Walmart do? Died. What did United do? Rallied. We need you to fall, United. It's starting to fall. Fall some more. Fall some more. Oh, there we go. Look at that. It's time to buy United Airlines. What is American Airlines doing? Same thing. United Airlines. Okay. Let's do. Well, let's just do one day. One day call at the money, $57. Let's buy three of those. Well, let's put it in the money. Get a little higher delta. Day limit uh, quantity, one, two, three, four, five. Place order. Okay. I'm going to keep that one till tomorrow. Just for fun. Meta. Meta, 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 meta. Did we get out of meta? Oh, we did. We took our profits. Good thing, because it went right up to where we said it was going to go. There's our little C point. Came in even a little bit sooner than I thought. Right there. Boom, 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 boom. Right there. Dun, 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 dun. Right there. Third drive. Break the blue lights. Let's see this thing come back to the Fibonacci sweet spot uh, all the way down here. Who's going to draw their, they're going to want to draw their Fibonacci rulers from right here in this opening bell. Where's the opening bell? It's one more bar over. Let's put it at the bottom of the opening bell right there. Okay. So top of the first drive. This is the A drive. We got still the rest of the day. One, two, three, four, five more hours. We could get a nice Elliott wave out of this thing. I'd like to see it drop down in here. Buy it again and go for the second drive high, right? Doesn't mean it can't go up. This is the C drive right in here. This is the third drive. It could be a little, it didn't break the blue lights yet. So it could just be a little pennant right in here like this. And it could make one more push up. Could actually make two pushes up, right? Because this would be this would be C1 right here. C1. Let's even tag it as a C1. What is it? C1. F. C1 F? Because it's just the fractal. It's the fractal drive. I never did that in the book. I'm doing it for you guys right now. It'd be a C1F 
going into, wait, where's the C? This is A drive, B drive, C drive. Yeah, so this is C1F right here. C1F right there. That would make this one C2F. C2F. And we get three, right? We get three of them. So this would be C2F. So we got out at the top of the C1F, pulled back. It's trying to make a C2F right now, which means it has to, let's blow this up, make it bigger. Oh, it is blowed up. It is blowed up already. And now I lost it. There it is. Let's blow it up and make it even bigger, bigger. So let's do our probabilities, probability tables. Let's get rid of all these. Okay, so this is our C1F. This is our this break right here that it's trying to make right now. That's its C2F. So where's the bow tie? Put in your bow tie right here. Top, where's the bottom here? It's got to go up. It's going to make twice of the fall, right? So then back down and tie off the bow tie. So if it's going to make a C2F, it's going to go up to that one. And then it could even make a C3F. Do you think it's going to do a C3F? Probably not. But we'll see. It'd go up. It'd be a pullback. Come down in here. And then it would be a 3CF up in here. And tie off this direction. We'll see. I don't know if it's going to do that. This is a C2F right here, though. And it came up and tested that previous high, and it's failing. Needed a break above to be that C2F. Otherwise, it's going to fail. It's going to hit that blue light. And we would anticipate it coming back down into the Fibonacci sweet spot after that. Not going to come straight down. It'll do some dances like this. Might even come down, go back up, and then come down. So if you wanted to get in, I keep drawing these stupid arrows. Delete all arrows. So if you want to get into meta for the long term, I would wait for it to come back after this big, long push. It's going to try again. C2F. C3F would be coming in and pushing up one more time. We didn't ever get an A2. This is... This is all a this is all an A drive. This is all one big long A drive. Right? It's our first drive of the morning. But inside of that first big long drive, right here, we get all these little pullbacks. And these little pullbacks are fractal pullbacks. And we got one here. That's a Good solid one. That's another one. That's another. That's why I'm calling that the third one. This could be actually, I don't know. That's kind of an extension. Let's come in here and delete all this. We could come in here. This could be the first drive. This thing did come back far enough to break it. So that's why I, right here. See, it came all the way back into the Fibonacci sweet spot. So it's a fractal break right there. So that's a solid. That's a solid one. That's a solid A drive right there. Solid A drive. That's your B drive or your counter trend. This one here didn't really come back far enough to call it a full. See, because from here to here, it never did come back into the Fibonacci sweet spot. It needs to come back into the Fibonacci sweet spot to really be. So this could still be the B drive. So this would be B1 right here. This could be B2. This could be B3, and it's failing on B3. But I like better to call that the C, and this is a C, C1, C2. But nonetheless, it's all one big A drive right here. So this is one big A drive, and it's going to break those blue lights. I want to see it come back to the Fibonacci sweet spot right here. And if it would do that, we could buy some meta and we could get some 30 day meta. We could go in and say, well, we're going to buy some longer term meta. Look at our three and me. That thing's taken off for us. We're going to be rich, rich, rich beyond our wildest dreams. We're up 55 bucks on that thing already. What about United? Healthcare. Uh -huh. 
United Airlines is trying to go. Why we're not making money on it. We got in a little bit late. There's our red arrow. We preempted that a little bit, didn't we? So we're good. This one, we wanted to fall a little bit more. It may not fall. It's got to break those blue lights. This is, what did we do with that one? 29 days. Yeah, kind of a stupid place to buy one, wasn't it? We have the drive one, we have drive two. We know that we we're going to get a counter trend. We thought maybe we get a drive three, but it's starting to fall and fail out of that thing. Oh, well, we went for a 30. Day. This came down into the Fibonacci sweet spot. That's why we're looking for that thing to rally up out of there now. But on the daily chart, that's why we bought that Vertex Energy. We're going to try and see if that thing won't go up in the next 30 days. It's another one of our lotto tickets. All right, guys. Wore out my welcome. There's J.P. Morgan Chase coming back down to the 100-period moving average. It's drive one, drive one, drive two. Man, are we going to get a drive three out of that thing? It's gone too big. Probably get a... I'm not sure broke right there. You could almost call that drive one, drive two, drive three. Broke the blue lights right there. One dot. A, B, C. Back to Fibonacci. It's on a daily chart. Here's your goal. Be a buyer down in here. So it'll come down in here. It'll probably go up and then come back down. We'll be buyers down in here for a longer-term trade. If it'll go down that far, probably will. Delta Airlines. Everything's just kind of died here. You, except for United. United's the one. United's the one. We're all united under United. You're so clever, Land. United Healthcare, there we're getting a little bit of a movement. It's fallen for us. We needed to fall back into the Fibonacci sweet spot, guys. Come on, at least down to the 38.2. Down to here. Then we can take our profits and be happy. <clears throat> All right, that's the name of the game. I'm going to let you guys go. I do have a Sunday school lesson for you. Let's go see our Sunday school lesson. How do I identify market bottoms? Large amounts of panic selling, volume spikes. At the bottom of a major pullback or drawdown usually indicates the bottom of a crash. A large expansion of daily price bar ranges. Smart, buy, smart money buys the valleys and sells the rallies, while dumb money panic sells at the market lows and FOMO, FOMO buys into market highs. FOMO, fear of missing out, buys in market highs. The secret to panic buying and panic selling is to panic before everyone else. <laughs> All right, guys, that's our Sunday school lesson for today. If you liked today and you had fun, hopefully you had some fun. Hit the little thumbs up. That's always helpful. And subscribe if you haven't. A lot of guys come and watch this channel but don't subscribe. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when we're going to do more of these. And we will see you guys on the flip side. Tomorrow's Friday, so we'll have a Friday. We'll have a fun Friday day. And... um See if we can't make back a little bit of what we lost in the futures market tomorrow. Friday, we'll see. We'll see. See if the market will run for us tomorrow. See if we can catch a trend. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Take care. <laughs> Michael Bruce, running away immediately after getting green. That's a good strategy. All right. See you guys tomorrow.